outside the car and shot. We were astonished by data we obtained from inside the police department. It revealed that as killings rose, police activity fell. Former police superintendent Gary McCarthy tells 60 Minutes the problems can't be overstated. We're reaching a state of lawlessness, right? That's what's happening. And crime skyrocketing, that's a huge problem. Some people looking at the Chicago Police Department have said it's in crisis. Crisis is a good word. It's a story people all over the country are talking about right now. After a night of countless fights inside shopping malls across the country. I think everybody's emotions are really high right now. So I, I think it's just like I said, it's the time that we live in. And uh, I think all us innocent bystanders, just our reactions is very quick. Everybody's assuming something could happen. A New Year's Eve celebration turns deadly in Istanbul after a terror attack inside a crowded nightclub. Turkey's biggest cities have been hit by several attacks over the last few months. Closed circuit TV pictures show a gunman firing in the street outside the club. A mystery in the waters off Nova Scotia. There is growing concern about thousands of sea creatures washing up dead on their shores. They have been finding dead herring on the beach for more than a month, but recently other marine life has started appearing ashore. Then yesterday we started finding scallops on the beach. Nice, nice big scallops, and like everything's dead. We like to know what's going on. So at least for now, the mystery continues to baffle residents and social media commentators alike. Well, if you live on the water in eastern Baltimore County, you may be seeing something that's rather unpleasant. Thousands of dead fish are washing up on shore. Fish are dying by the thousands. Something is just killing them. They're washing them up. They're coming in here just like starving for oxygen and turning over and just rolling over and dying. Chuck Adams first noticed the fish kill on Christmas Day. Deaths that so far remain a mystery. No, yeah, it'd just be nice to find out what's going on. We're all very concerned, all of us and neighbors, everybody's been out here looking to see what's going on. We just don't know. California and Nevada were shaken this past week by a swarm of earthquakes. We saw the series of earthquakes that rocked the California-Nevada border. Overnight earthquakes waking up the California-Nevada border. The State Geological Survey recording the strongest cluster, ranging from a magnitude 5.7 to 5.5 on the Richter scale. A 7.6 magnitude earthquake hit the island of Chiloé, a famous tourist spot in Chile, on Christmas Day. Magnitude 3.3 earthquake shook five miles from Malibu this morning. The epicenter was 13 miles from Agora Hills, 14 miles from Thousand Oaks. In the last 10 days, there was another magnitude 3 earthquake nearby. But I think that in the future, which is what you're asking, first of all, there are going to be many more people who have this capability of really transforming the world. But never before has technology been so borderless. You know, in the, in the period that you're talking about, we had a lot of new technology, great technology. I write about the telegraph, but the telephone. But it is nothing like the digital revolution. We have massive flows of information across borders, massive flows of ideas. I don't think we can, as human beings, conceive of where this is, mm -hmm. where this is actually headed. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, in, in August 27, August 27, 2015, one billion people were on Facebook at the same time. That was, uh, um, you know, 
a year and a half ago. Um, but it's, we're going to see three, four, five billion people on Facebook at one time. This is a kind of globalization that, you know, people in, in, in the early 20th century, even in science fiction, they couldn't conceive of. On the other hand, if you think about movement of people, the massive number of refugees that are moving around the world, I mean, this, this is, of course, one of the greatest tragedies. And it's a tragedy, human tragedy, and it's also a tragedy in my view, because I think the entire humanitarian apparatus has broken down. But that's a kind of globalization. We're looking at a tragedy of unbelievable proportion. What's the logical end state of globalization? Is, is there going to be a Jean Monnet of the world? Is, are we going to have a single global currency? Um, are we going to have some form of global government? The scene this time, a busy airport in South Florida. After a lone gunman began executing strangers at random in baggage claim. His family said he came home with mental issues, hearing voices in his head. Just two months ago, he walked into an FBI office in Alaska, claiming that his mind was being controlled by the CIA and the U.S. government, that they were forcing him to watch ISIS videos. I mean, he did not say a single word. He was emotionless. I just remember seeing his face and thinking, wow, he looks so young, uh, you just had this blank stare, just kind of really just no emotions. Often in lone wolf situations, the shooters either commit, them, commit suicide or they commit suicide by cop. This was a somewhat different scenario. This was a strange ending. Normally you, it ends very violently, like it starts. Uh, by him, basically, it appears he emptied his gun and then lay prone, uh, giving himself up without a fight, which is a strange conclusion to all of these. It's destroyed us. It's destroyed everybody. It's destroyed us. And I, don't, I just don't understand what is going on. My son is not a rapist. Reeves supposedly told investigators he has a problem often hearing voices in his head that force him to make very bad decisions. He says a mental evaluation on Reeves should be performed to see if the voices in his head meets the legal standard of mental insanity. It's so profound that he doesn't understand the wrongfulness of his acts or the voices are so compelling that he feels powerless to resist them. We're also getting disturbing new details from Fort Worth police about a man who's accused of murdering his wife and their newborn son. In the affidavit, police say Vanderweege told a co-worker that he recently started taking medication that makes him hear voices that tell him to kill people. The officer noted in his report Vandewege was showing no emotion. What kind of a person would kill a baby? You know, babies, especially, a, I don't know, I just... Well, I was completely shocked that this had even happened in the first place. And then... This is the last photo Shanna Vandewig posted on Facebook, just a few days after Thanksgiving. Two weeks later, Vandewig and her three-month-old son were found dead. I know that she was so happy when she met him, that she kind of just changed, and they just seemed so happy together. down a man wanted in two recent attacks near Duke University. Our cameras, the only ones there as officers took Samuel Hasty into custody last night on Underwood Avenue. Hasty speaking to ABC 11 in an exclusive. It's not me, he says, the 27 year old denying his involvement in the crimes for a very surprising reason. Samuel Hasty agreed to a jailhouse interview here before facing a judge on sexual assault and robbery charges. 
He repeatedly denied involvement in the crime that happened November 30th on Swift Avenue and the one that happened Saturday afternoon at Duke Gardens. He says he is the man in the surveillance photo from a store where a credit card stolen from one victim was used, but when asked if he is not responsible for that or the assault at Duke Gardens, he told me he hears voices in his head. They tell me to do stuff that sometimes I can't control. Like they tell me to kill myself. They was telling me to hurt people. They were telling me to just just do crazy stuff. In Southington, trying to figure out what caused a loud boom that rocked neighbors earlier today. Folks in surrounding towns heard and even felt that blast as well. At least that's what it sounded like. So far, no one seems to know what it was. It was loud, and uh, I was sitting in the chair, like I said, in the house, and, and the house shook. It was a quiet holiday morning. Most of the people had the day off. It felt like an explosion to me. When more than a half a dozen neighborhoods around Connecticut heard what many thought could have been a sonic boom. I've never felt the house shake before. From Waterbury to Wolka to Cheshire to Southington, neighbors heard a thunderous explosion followed by a ground-shaking shockwave. It rattled windows, knocked pictures askew, and then stopped. Their neighborhoods were quiet once again. And all of our neighbors did too. Bob across the street, they were all out on the sidewalk staring up at the sky talking about it, trying to figure out exactly where it came from. Matter of fact, they were surprised that they hadn't even heard sirens in the neighborhood. We kept waiting for the sirens and they didn't come. We kept following the feeds on Facebook and, uh, you know, it's up to eight, nine hundred comments on it. And uh, the police apparently didn't know what, what was going on. I, I mean, really, it's, it's a most unusual thing because there's no building missing a roof. There was no seismic activity that we know of, or earthquake, anything like that. They're just a loud boom, shook and rattled just for miles around. Thanks so much, Bob. What could that have been? We'll find out at some point. sustainable kind of globalization and then you would might might see international institutions that are much smaller much less um, they they their ambitions are much you know they're, they're there to execute fewer things and and nation states that the governments are much more they deal with one another and globalization is a big issue they're not it's not kind of handed off so I, I think that we may be headed for a different sort of model. I'm not sure, but the one thing I am sure of is we shouldn't be so wedded to what we've seen as the only way. In these early days of 2017, there is a palpable uncertainty about the state of the world. Right at the beginning was Dr. Kissinger talking about the disintegration of the old order as we understand it. Even more important today, than they were then, because now we need a concept of world order that is for the first time in history, that all parts of the world can directly affect all other parts. I think there is no question that we are at quite a unique point in time. I've not seen anything like the situation we are in in, in my lifetime. The changes certainly brought by technology are only going to accelerate. Think about the technology we have today and add on. A lot of people, I think, would like to just pretend it's not happening and reject it. The pace of change is accelerating dramatically. And hope that they manage to make it into their 50s or 60s without it really disrupting their life too much. But um, clearly you cannot do that when it is coming at you like a freight train. And I am absolutely convinced that all the new technology we're seeing will have one side to it that can be negatively disruptive, but also one side to it that can be extremely positive. 
We have biometrics that actually means that you, you, you can be recognized. Tell us, what's the future of paying and shopping for things? I believe that two thirds of the world will ultimately end up paying with biometrics. Um, I think the emerging markets will be a lot faster to adopt uh, because they don't have our notions of privacy in the US and Europe. Personally, I like it. I like to choose whether my fingerprint is available somewhere or not. Um, but in a lot of countries around the world, that's not a choice. Mm. You have to make it available. So but we don't I, want to go down that road in the US or Europe, well, do you? I, I, I don't know. Has India right? gone too far? It's, 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 always, it's always a balance. I can also tell you the same people that complain about it put their fingerprint whenever they enter the country. They don't say anything about they it. They want to go on like, holiday there. You, so. you can't enter the country anymore, any, any country in the mm. US or, or Europe, um, without giving your fingerprint. So you're actually giving it to somebody. We know that the millennials and newer generations are actually a lot less concerned with privacy than the older generations. And we know that they'll give it up, they'll give up certain privacies for convenience much more willingly than others. Technological progress is unstoppable. No matter what administration, no matter you know what government, it, it, no matter where you are in the world increasingly, it doesn't really matter. One of the key problems of our period is that the international order with which we were familiar is disintegrating in some respects of how we can really create, I would say, a new world order. I would start by saying that we live in a dangerous world. We see a proliferation of new conflicts. Old conflicts seem never to die. Conflicts are becoming more and more interlinked, more linked with the new threat of global terrorism. That today's wars are wars that nobody wins. Everybody is losing. Meaning the fight for most About a region that is really sh witnessing shifts and changes. Uh, every time we call them unprecedented, we get even more outlandish uh, moments. Russia and Turkey have carried out joint airstrikes on Daesh. This is the first time that uh, Russia and Turkey have joined forces in such an operation and nine uh, Russian fighter jets and eight Turkish warplanes are involved in this operation. And this operation is yet another sign of increased cooperation between Russia and Turkey uh, in Syria. And in a world as fragile as today, of course, it doesn't take much to flip something. <clears throat> you know, the butterfly phenomenon, now we have it. It's so fragile, it doesn't take much. Sure. A single event can change everything. Right. It's, of course, too many involved. In the years before 89, it was a relatively clear set world. Practically two, maybe three powers of relevance, and you knew who to call to solve the issue, who to call today. The potential for CRISPR is described in the recent issue of The New Yorker. The story is called Rewriting the Code of Life. Could be a revolutionary advancement. One of the most significant developments in this field is the newly discovered ability to modify the very genes in our DNA. And I want to quote a line from your story. You say that Esfeld directs the, quote, sculpting evolution group at MIT, where he and his colleagues are attempting to design molecular tools capable of fundamentally altering the natural world. I mean, that is a pretty extraordinary set of ambitions. But also, you may want to make a baby taller, faster, smarter. So the potential for taking advantage of it is clearly there. What are the possibilities of, of connecting our bodies to the Internet? Well, the Internet of Things, we all see it, right? Our toaster, our refrigerator can be connected. But over and over, we're seeing more devices that people are wearing. I, I could not be prouder of the, the transformation that's taken place in our society uh, just in the last decade. This is the January 
issue of National Geographic, and it is called Gender Revolution. Debate tonight in Thousand Oaks. The school board there will talk about whether to teach children about the accomplishments of the LGBT community in the classroom. Showing a range of people who are describing themselves and describing their gender in different ways. You know, bi-gender, non-binary, transgender, and pretty much everything in between. Dunn was responding to a parent who was questioning his perceived hesitation regarding the FAIR Act. And this is Jonathan, who is eight, who identifies as both a boy and a girl at the same time um, since he's been two and a half. And this is taken in a place that is much more accepting than the last picture that we saw. This is taken at uh, California's uh, Bay Area Rainbow Day Camp, where kids can safely express their gender identities. And here he is pretending he's a unicorn as well. So. It's a state law which compels public schools to teach the contributions of people with disabilities and those within the LGBT community. Dunn responded by writing, in part, if I ignore my Christian beliefs, what happens to my soul when I die? Where I spend eternity is far more important to me than being a school board trustee. It's, it's interesting because it, it, it conflicts a little bit with this idea that uh, I am a girl when they're little boys. It's just, a, it's just social circumstances push people in one direction rather than another. Safe space is invading college campuses. A new college trend to create these safe space areas where students can be sheltered from opposing views. Right here in Southern Oregon, the Oregon Cabaret Theater was flooded with people concerned about Trump's presidency tonight. Organizers say that the Ghost Light Project symbolically creates a light for what they say are dark times ahead. Some university boards and administrations now bow to pressure groups and shield students from these ideas through safe spaces code words and trigger warnings is in my view a terrible mistake. And it's a moment for the entire national theater community to make a pledge. A pledge to not only be safe spaces but brave spaces. One of the most dangerous places on a college campus is the so-called safe space because it creates a false impression that we can isolate ourselves from those who hold different views. Well, to all the people across the nation protesting the Trump presidency, canceling ex exams, bringing in therapy dogs, and hosting, yes, there's something called a cry-in. A mystery in the water in St. Petersburg tonight. Something is killing pelicans and making other birds sick. And biologists have no idea what's killing them. This year is different, killing birds too. But the thing is, we've never seen birds die. It's a marine mystery. Scientists are trying to figure out what's causing a record number of humpback whale deaths in Hawaii this season. It is higher than usual. It's almost double early in the season. Wildlife officials say it's the largest mass stranding ever in Florida. And this is quite a mystery tonight. The big question, why would 95 whales all beach themselves? What's so interesting is the scientists tell us they have never seen a stranding this large for this species of whale. Uh, the science is telling us that the rate of extinction today is about 100 to 1,000 times higher than natural rates. Uh, species are extinguishing very quickly. Their quest for clues about why the massive creature died, likely within the past week. They say the whale did not appear to have been hit by a ship. When you have an animal like that coming in and there's no apparent cause of injuries, we need to examine it. So scientists have developed, actually genetically engineered these cow apples, where essentially they've turned off that enzyme.
People don't want their Gravenstein apple turning into a Frankenstein apple. So, <laughs> so I'm not so much concerned about genetically modified foods, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Apparently, these are not, it's not being advertised as GMO either on the packaging. Ah, uh, so that's, and, uh, that's there were the a lot rub. of people concerned saying that does that meet all the uh, laws? Right. For food? Well, it may not be an acronym you're aware of yet, but the scientific community is touting 2017 as the year of CRISPR. But what nature could have created, we can create in a single generation. This shows the enormous industrial engine of biology. And just as we can modify mice to run much further, we could modify humans to run much further. Scientists have found a way to grow human organs in animals. Yes, you heard that right. Human cells have successfully grown inside a pig embryo. For the first time, scientists are seeing how our cells grow and interact inside an animal. This pig, the first known chimera. We now have the opportunity to redesign evolution, to create what might be called rational evolution. And we can now use these cast proteins to um, make cuts in any DNA sequence, which allows us to mutate or edit those DNA sequences. In a sense, what you can do is modify and manipulate. Now these westerly swells are record high. Gail Lamar has watched the waves roll into Half Moon Bay every day for the last 30 years. Changing, it's really changing. The Monterey buoy recorded 34 feet. That's the highest it's ever recorded. We've been here for about five years and this is the highest we've seen it yet. The river is, I think, twice as wide as it was last week. And I have never seen it crest or make the river this, this tall before. The water had such force, it shattered windows and ruined the floors. The surveillance video captured this, a rogue wave that came up over the breakers and straight into and through one of the restaurant's first floor window. Just a lot of rain. We've never had this much rain in that short a period before. Thousands of birds found dead in the Yolo Bypass. A CBS 13 viewer sent us these pictures and asked us what is causing this disturbing phenomenon. Look, it's just shocking to see that kind of die off. I've never seen anything like that before. Walking along the Yolo Bypass, Lawrence Campling saw this about a week ago. Easily hundreds of bodies, hundreds of birds all dead along the side of this flooded field. More than 3,700 American coops, birds that look like ducks, all of them dead. People here describe the impact of the storm as something that they have never seen like it before in their lives, completely leveling homes. It literally looks like God took half of the mobile home park and threw it across the street into the woods. Chilean authorities say they have never seen anything on this scale. The wildfires across the country are the worst in Chile's modern history. Virtually every building Every home, every school, every shop has been reduced to rubble. 
Well, good morning. The coast of Massachusetts is no stranger to harsh weather, but usually not like this. My neighbor said this is the worst it's been in 20 years except for Sandy. To Peru now, which remains in a state of emergency after two days of heavy flooding. A mysterious boom felt across the county. We got calls and messages from people who said they felt a huge shaking around mid-afternoon. There were no reports of earthquakes that would have caused that. Today, they confirm no aircraft reached supersonic speeds. So bottom line, even the experts don't really know. New at 6 o'clock, a mystery that a lot of people are now talking about on Facebook. Around 8 o'clock last night, people from the Mount Holly area all the way down to Rock Hill, well, they apparently heard a really loud boom. Yeah, the boom was loud enough to rattle nerves. This is the third time in the past week the town's been rocked by loud booms. Residents say there's something strange happening in the uptown area, and they want answers. On multiple occasions, they've heard a loud boom, some even reporting the sound follows a flash of light. There's a lot of speculation as to what could be causing these booms. Maybe a blown transformer, fireworks, or some sort of activity that's taking place along the river. But those who've heard this noise say it's just too powerful to be any of that. And it sounded like a bomb went off underneath our house, rattled the whole house. It was the loudest sound I can think of without an actual explosion going off. This has been happening since the start of December, and nobody has a clue as to what it is. There is an invisible killer out in space, and it's draining the life right out of galaxies. A group of Australian scientists is on the case. shouldn't be surprised you know a lot of times when when these things happen especially when there is um, a spiritual component of it the reason why I stand for for life is because I believe God created all life and we live uh, in a world that is is anti-god in a lot of ways so we can't be surprised when certain things get more play than others um, but that doesn't deter us from the truth uh, one of the things that I said was that we um, have to stand firm on truth no matter if people like it or not or if it gets it gets play on the air or not. It doesn't change um, what's important. It doesn't change what is true. A Bible found untouched in Bass Chapel at William Carey University gains attention on social media. And we walked in the front of the, of the chapel. And as you'll see from the photograph, if you can remember, we could look straight up the aisle and you could see the large stained glass window was missing. He noticed something sitting on a table under the window, a Bible. But that that Bible withstood the storm and it is a symbol for believers like myself and the people at Cary and it was there and it was there to remind us that God is our constant companion. The Bible was open to Psalm 46, a verse dear to him. God is our refuge and strength, a helper who is always found in times of trouble and therefore it was just a, a, it was a, a surreal moment. It was an awe-inspiring an awe moment perhaps is the best way to put it.